Today, we're gonna talk about iguanas, the green iguana. As you may or may not know, I rescued an iguana who was found in a dumpster about th two months ago, three months ago. My, my perception of time is like so off. So I adopted an iguana. Growing up, my father had an iguana that was very mean and did some serious damage to my dad. And I always thought my dad was very tough. And this iguana really wreaked havoc on my dad. After caring for an iguana for the last handful of months, uh, I just thought I would make a video about why I do not think iguanas are great pets unless you are that person that does your research and is willing to do everything and deal with everything that I'm gonna talk about in this video. I have had many different reptiles. If you're new here, I have had bearded dragons growing up. I have leopard gecker, geckers, I have leopard geckers. Ryan's calling me, hang on please. Yellow. Hey, what time are you thinking for tacos? Uh, eight, seven? Okay. I don't know where I was at. Okay, so um, so I have cared for a green iguana now for the past handful of months, and I've seen firsthand how hard it is to care for an iguana. Part of that is the fact that I already have about 10 other animals, so um, if I didn't have help with my animals, I definitely would not be able to have this many animals. It is a lot of work. It takes a lot of time, and I enjoy every second of it. Trust me, but when stuff gets busy, it does make it hard. So you you know you just have to make the time for it. And if that's important to you, then you you know your limits, or you should at least before you get an animal. Growing up with an iguana, it was my father's iguana, so I never really had to do anything with the iguana. I didn't have to feed it. I didn't have to clean the cage. Like that was my dad's responsibility. So I always thought. It's peachy keen, this is easy. Well, no it is not. <laughs> you know, I, I have various reptiles myself. I have a crested gecko, I have bearded dragons, I have leopard geckos, I have a monitor um, that I rescued. Actually, pretty much all of these are rescues except for my chameleon and my crested gecko. I have experience with all these different animals and I would say that an iguana is right up there with how difficult a chameleon is and you might be surprised because people fool you. Like you get, a, you, you get an iguana from the pet store and it's like $19.99 and it's small. Sadly, most of them die before their first birthday because they are not cared for properly. Someone saw them in the pet store and they're like, oh wow, that's a cheap, reptile that I can buy for myself right now and cool. I'm gonna tell you some of the reasons why they are difficult to care for and I'm going to suggest some different reptiles if this is your first reptile that you're going to have. So I collected all the information and let's go ahead and get started and I'm gonna explain to you why an iguana is not a great pet, starter pet, starter reptile, whatever you wanna call it. First thing that maybe you don't know is that an iguana can get very large. And by that I mean they can reach over six feet in length. So with that being said, you may think, oh, I could let my iguana roam around the house. No, you cannot. Your iguana needs a designated area. Iguanas are territorial. They need a designated area in your home that's just for them. And it's not like, it's not just, oh cool, I got this space, we're good. Like there's much more that goes into it than that. They need a very, very large cage. I would say the minimum cage size for an iguana since they get six feet long would be nine feet wide. And because they are arboreal, you need height as well. It can't be a thin, small cage. They love to climb. They love to hang out in the trees. That is where what they do in their natural habitat. You need to emulate that as closely as possible. I would say you need to have at least six to seven feet in height along with the nine feet. So a lot of people will actually just transform like a large bathroom or a small room into an iguana room, which is then even a little more difficult with the heating and lighting, and I'm gonna explain to you why in a little bit. Also, on top of the size that they get, they can live upwards to 20 years. 20 years. Take your age right now, add 20 years to that. That's how long you're gonna have an iguana. That's what you're signing up for. You're signing up for 20 years of caring for that reptile. And when I get further into why they are difficult to care for, um, you might think to yourself, I'm gonna be doing that for 20 years every single day. Like, I don't know if I can do that. So iguanas are from South America. So they are used to a very humid and hot environment. So you're gonna need a basking area for your iguana, no less 
than 85 to 90 degrees and you're going to have to maintain a 75 degrees throughout the evening and nighttime as well. So if you live in a cold area, you're going to need night lights um, and heat lamps for your iguana throughout the night. Another thing is that iguanas actually, um, they absorb moisture basically through their skin, which is one reason why maintaining a humidity, a tropical humidity, like 80, 90% is what they need. So a lot of people put them in screen cages, but then live in Arizona, you're gonna need to miss your iguana a lot. And another reason why people soak their iguanas weekly is because they can't maintain that. Iguanas love to be soaked, so soaking your iguana like twice per week is kind of a must and misting them throughout the day. And it's just our job to like emulate as closely as possible their natural environment since at one point in time they were snatched out of their environment and made pets. Another thing is that um, you are going to need a UVB light. Um, it helps them digest their food. It helps prevent a calcium deficiency. Um, another thing with the lighting and heat that's difficult if you have an entire room, you need to keep that entire room 75 degrees and you need to keep the basking area around 90 degrees. That is very expensive. Um, my personal electricity bill is about $600 per month, and that's with all of my animals. Almost all of them have heat lights, and some of them don't even have heat lights because uh, they don't need it, but it is expensive. It's very expensive, and iguanas absolutely love to climb. So with that being said, you can't just put the heat lights directly on top of the cage. You will burn your iguana. You have to have a stand that holds the lights, and. Um, so they can't get to the lights, they, they will burn themselves. So that's another tricky thing if you're turning a room into like the iguana a room, a room, the iguana room, it's difficult to um, have basking areas. You have to have like the, thi the, the protective thingy around the lights that I can't think of the name of right now to protect your iguana from getting burned. Another thing about iguanas is um, they're gonna need a fresh salad every single morning, maybe even sometimes twice a day. Some iguanas eat every other day. The iguana that I had, his name was Oscar. He was a pig lit. He reminded me of my dog Frankie. He eats like crazy. So anytime I'd walk in the room in the morning, he's so intelligent and smart. Like he heard that door and he knew that I was coming in there to feed him. He would just pace his uh, cage and like wait until I came near it. And he was like, my salad, my salad, my turn. Like he was just really all about the salad. So you need to be able to get to the grocery store every couple days and provide a fresh salad with um, leafy greens and um, fruits and some vegetables. Yeah, I'd have to make a fresh salad every single day. It was like meal prepping for like my rabbits and my iguana and I would have to go to the grocery store like every two days. I don't think I said this in the beginning of the video, but the reason why Oscar is no longer with me is because I found him an awesome home with some people who drove like an hour and a half to come see him. He's been adopted to a very, very loving family who is very knowledgeable about iguanas and I'm very, very excited for him to be in his new home. It's, it's really just like heartwarming to see what he came from to where he is now and he's being so loved and so just cared for and it just makes my heart so happy. Thank you to you guys for watching my videos because you guys are the reason why I was able to afford to buy him a cage and feed him and do all of the stuff that I did for him. It's it's because you guys watch my videos and it's like as simple as that. So thank you for your support. Back to the salads. Also with the salad, you they're gonna need um, a calcium supplement on top of the salad, I would say a couple times a week. Um, so that's something that you have to do as well. Another thing to consider about iguanas um, is that they're, I mean, when I got my monitor lizard, the lady was like, her nails are really, really sharp. Well. My monitor's nails are nothing compared to an iguana's claws. An iguana's claws are basically like little razors strapped to their toes and they, their nails, they will slice through anything and everything. Like I have, like, I don't know if you can still see, I still have a cut right here. I had cuts all over my arms and they hurt. Like they're, they slice deep. So that's something to be aware of too. They, they basically will use you as a climbing post and will crawl all over you and scratch you up. Another thing that they do is they, they can bite. Oscar did not bite. Um, that's something that you have to, you have to handle them and tame them when they are younger, but they do 
bite and they whip with their tail, their tail is very, very, very strong. Um, an adult iguana can actually whip their tail strong enough and break human bones. I'm assuming like bones on the face or something, but yeah, they, they're very, very strong and they're very strong willed and they're very territorial. So if you have an untamed iguana, get a full body like, armor suit or something like you're gonna need it um and to that note guana is pretty much like their whole goal is to get out of their cage and they're very intelligent creatures so most likely that'll happen a few times definitely happened with oscar outside and i found him uh thank goodness they're always gonna be looking for ways to get out they're gonna be climbing on everything and to me when an animal does that it's stressful to me because i feel like they're not happy where they're at they are smart creatures and they're basically always trying to figure out a way to get out no matter how tame your iguana is you cannot walk down the street with him on your shoulder and be like check it out like cool like that iguana is going to going to jump off of you and it's gone and you'll never see him again or he's gonna climb down you and he'll be gone that's not safe for your iguana it's not safe for you but more so it's not safe for your iguana because let's be real I care about animals more than humans and if you get a couple scratches you'll live but the iguana ditching he may not live. One thing you can do with iguanas so though it's really cute is you can make a little iguana burrito. My cousin Sarah taught me that because she has an iguana. It's a burrito! <laughs> And she wraps, she wraps her up and then she like pets her little head and they fall asleep and it, it's adorable. A couple other physical things uh, to talk about that are kind of a big deal um, to some people. Uh, iguana's tails do fall off. So if that grosses you out or you have small children, I would stay away from an iguana. They bite, they whip their tails. Um, their claws are very sharp, they're territorial and their tails fall off, which can be kind of traumatizing uh, if, if you're not prepared for that or you don't know that. So that's something that can happen. It is a possibility. Two other things that are kind of big deals um, to me that I didn't know and I thought these two things were kind of a really big pain in the butt. One is that iguanas actually sweat through their nostrils. So if you have a screen case everything around it is going to get like splattered wet on a little bit like if you're in the shower or something there's water dripping you go like that and it kind of goes everywhere that's kind of what it is so there's always gonna be spots like if there's some part of their cage that's glass there's gonna be you're gonna have to clean it often lastly you wouldn't think that you would have to consider an iguana's poop you know a bearded dragon's poop is really gross when it's wet but then it dries up and it's super easy to just dispose of um, a monitor lizard typically poops in the water and then you just dump it out and it's fine. Rabbit poop, I'll pick up with my hand, no big deal. Um, leopard gecko poop, also dry pretty much. It dries up quick, not super gross. Chameleon poop, same thing. Iguana poop, it stinks. It stinks really bad. It's mushy, it's gross. It's like a little iguana uh, like patty. Like it's a little cow pie of iguana poop that smells like baby poop. It's really gross. It got all over like the, the orchid bark that I had in there and I would have to like scoop the a bunch of bark out to get rid of it and it was just like, it was gross. The poop was really gross. I didn't, I, I didn't expect a lizard's poop to be that nasty, um, but it was pretty gross. And if you have a big enough water, um, container in your iguana's, iguana's area, they will typically poop in their water, which is awesome. Oscar didn't always poop in his water, so it's kind of, I guess, a 50-50 thing. It just depends on your iguana, but that's something that really um, turned me off about having an iguana is the amount that they pooped and how often you had to clean it up and how you had to clean it up. It was just like, it was just pretty gross. That brings me to the end of this video and kind of all of the reasons why I think iguanas aren't necessarily a great pet. Hopefully it helps like give you guys a good idea of what a daily, what the daily life looks like with an iguana and all of the things you have to do for them and do with them and handle them and all the things you're gonna have to deal with if you decide to go down that road. And now you're probably asking, okay, so an iguana sounds kind of out of my league, a little too difficult. What would you suggest for a starter reptile? I would suggest a bearded dragon. Why? Because they are diurnal. So they are awake during the day and they sleep at night. So they will be awake when you are awake. Unlike leopard geckos, you have to kind of feed them at night and at dusk and that's when they're active. Um, a bearded dragon is pretty really sturdy. Like they don't, they don't drop their tails. Um, they don't really bite. Like if you get bit by a bearded dragon, like it's kind of laughable, like it just doesn't really happen. They're easy to care for in the sense that, I mean, they like a salad too. I give mine a salad every other day, but you can do a salad one day and then insects the next day. And personally, I think feeding an insect to an animal is a lot easier than making a salad every day. 
So that is easier. Um, they, they're very calm. They're not gonna whip you with their tails. So I truly think that if it's your first time getting a reptile or you have children and you wanna get a reptile, definitely stay away from an iguana. I think that you need to learn with a more starter reptile. An iguana, um, and bearded dragons don't live as long. They want, I think they live like six, seven years tops. So that is my suggestion if you are looking for a reptile. I have to go um, get some supplies for taco Sunday. That's what it is at my house today. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And thanks so much for watching guys. And if you guys have any ideas for any more videos on this channel, I would love to hear in the comments below what ideas you have, because I'm kind of like trying to figure out what I wanna put up. And I would love to hear from you guys what you wanna see. All right, bye you guys.